Dino Dan back with you with another video to help you navigate through some of the DinoJet technologies that are available. In this particular production, we're going to have a look at DinoJet's PowerCore software suite and TuneLab, specifically around tuning a Harley Davidson motorcycle with DinoJet's PowerVision, PowerVision 3, or PowerVision 4. Let's just have a look at some of the previous productions that I think are going to be helpful for you prior to diving into this particular um, installment. So DinoJet PowerCore Software Suite, there's a number of different little helpers that uh, video productions that I've produced that uh, hopefully have been of benefit for you navigating the software, utilizing the software. So in particular, the C3 and WinPEP8 data sync, I think is going to be helpful. The file type explanation the table view, and there's also a previous production about PowerCore um, and TuneLab. But again, today's production is going to be focused on uh, tuning a Harley-Davidson, again, with a PowerVision, a PowerVision 3, or a PowerVision 4. So let's just dive right into it, and uh, I'm going to launch a couple of things here. We've got the C3 tuning software. And then we've got, uh, for today's exercise, um, not Dino Control. Don't bother clicking on that. But WinPEP8 data, which should be popped up right here. So here's, here's some of the, the requisites that you're going to need to address. Number one, the latest version of PowerCore. You're going to want 3.0. Right now, 3.0 is only available as a beta version at the time of this production. It should be available as a production um, a public release or production release, public release here in the very near future. So to get the beta release, all you need to do is go up to tools, options, click this little flag, get more recent bug fixes and beta releases, click OK, and then that will install for you. The other, uh, the other thing that you're going to want to take care of is if you're a DinoJet authorized tuning center, you're going to want pro level permissions and to get those, you're going to want to contact your regional sales manager and they will take care of issuing you permissions that will allow you uh, access to more calibration items as well as um, the ability to use TuneLab, which is what we're going to talk about today. Now that you've got uh, a few things figured out in regards to having PowerCore 3.0, with pro level permissions. What you're gonna need in order to get through this exercise, of course, is your, your tune file here. In this case, we're using a tune file for a PowerVision 3 uh, or 4, which is a DJT. Hopefully you've watched that previous production I mentioned about file types. Um, if this were a DinoJet PVT, meaning a file that's for use with a DinoJet PowerVision, the original PowerVision that we launched way back in 2011, um, this procedure is exactly the same. So anyhow, you're going to need your tune file open over here in this document view. That will expose the calibration. What might happen is a template will download from the DinoJet server when you attempt to open this DJT. And then these calibration items will be available for you to, uh, you know, to review and edit. What I also have here is a number of Dyna runs on this particular bike. So it looks like I've got, I don't know, five, six or seven of these open. As far as the uh, how these were tested, you can see there's some notes here that says 40% throttle, 30, 80, 70, 60. And if we look at grid view, this is pretty slick. Um, you know, we can see that the operator spent some time. Um, we'll highlight all of these. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's scroll down. You can see that this operator said, all right, we're going to map out 30% throttle, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Um, and so you can see these uh, these little plots here along with the data. And hopefully you've watched table view to understand how some of this stuff works. It's very insightful. And as well, you can see that um, all of these are synchronized, which again is part of another production, WinPEP8 uh, data and uh, table syncing. So you should watch that in order to figure out kind of how to do this. This allows you to click anywhere and see where in the calibration you are on any of these tables, not just VE or air fuel, but 
for today's exercise and what Tune Lab is really mostly used for is to correct this airflow model or VE table uh, so that our desired AFR from the fuel table down here is respected um, at the tailpipe where we're measuring AFR or in the pipe preferably. So go back up here to TPS uh, based uh, front cylinder VE table. So again, two things you're going to need open. Dynajet tune file, in this case a DJT, and then a whole bunch of different log files. These could be done out on the street. These could be done on the dyno in a controlled method, uh, as you can see, as these are. <clears throat> and uh, in this particular case, what was done to the calibration is closed loop was temporarily disabled for the tuning process. And so this bike was taken out of closed loop and it was locked into open loop again, just for the tuning process. And so you should, uh, you should go through that, that basic set of edits to enforce open loop fuel control. I can certainly you know, show you how to do that in another production. But in any case, the DJT, the WinPEP8 data log files, all staged up. You should have a tab up here called Tune Lab. So once you click on Tune Lab, there's a load built in correction. If you have a separate expression because you built one or you received one or you trust that you have a version that's going to work well for you. Um, what we've got is just load the built-in correction um, at this point. So these are actually embedded in the definition file. So again, when you open this DJT tune file, the template is going to pull down from the server, open up the calibration, show you what's available. And also it's going to have these formulas. And so you can see this dialogue, load built-in formula, Autotune Pro open loop only. That's kind of just what we talked about. Open loop pro, advanced, closed loop, and open loop. I will talk about that in just a little bit, but let's start with Autotune Pro, open loop only. This note is made because you're going to want to use this script on a calibration that was locked in open loop. That's what Autotune Pro did on the original Power Vision. That was all handled on the device. For Power Vision 3 and 4, that is not handled on the device. It's handled here in software. But again, you can absolutely use this same exact correction formula or script or expression, depending on who you talk to uh, in the industry or at Dinojet. They'll refer to these things as you know different uh, in different terms. So Auto-Tune Pro, open loop only. Just select it. You can see the formula. There's some notes in here you're really going to want to pay attention to as well. Uh, as I mentioned, this can be used on a DJT or a PVT. So set this to true if you're using a PVT file, right? So this is false right now because we're using a DJT file. That's something you're going to have to manually edit. There's also a few things in here that you can um, you can edit, and there's some notes. So anytime you see this hashtag here, there are some notes um that uh that you should pay attention to so this is a big one what kind of what kind of you know file are you using a djt or a pvt and that is something you're going to have to set manually um this smoothing uh, more or less 100 works pretty you know pretty well and uh this is kind of a something you can set right now it's set to minimum afr of 10 don't show me anything below it technically dynojet wideband stuff doesn't anyhow and then anything above 19, don't show it. You can tighten this up down to, you know, 16 or something uh, a little a little tighter if you'd like. Um, in any case, just some just some notes there to pay attention to. So uh, I'll back up, and, and if you do need to edit these uh, those items that I just mentioned, we'll just click cancel, and I'll show you how to do that quick. Just hit this expression, and boom, it opens up in a table editor. Um, we can, you know, change this to uh, true, which is not true, right? We don't have a PVT file, so it's, uh, it's going to be false. But this is where I can't type. 
this is going to be where you make those those edits that I referred to just a minute ago. And um, and that's that. You just click away from this and uh, and that will be you know committed. If it's something you want to save and load it so you don't have to mess around in that editor, you can just click save and then load it. I'm working with PVTs today. Name the file accordingly. I'm working with DJTs today. Name the file accordingly. All right. So over to load build correction formula. Uh, load built-in correction formula, I should say. <clears throat> if you're all set, all you do is hit uh, load selected. Okay, and a, a dialog will will pop up here uh, once we click the perform correction. So there's green arrow. Okay, this is going to show you the uh, AFR ratio one. So that's you know front cylinder in this case. Um, of the uh, of the tune. Let's click OK. Uh, and these are AFRs from the run files that are open. So uh, not the tune. My my apologies. So it's going to step through every one of these. You could have fifteen different log files open, and it's going to step through every one of them. I tend to just click OK blindly through here. And you can see that data that was collected at various operating conditions. And we'll keep going. Okay, so this is what it's saying. We're 9% off here. We're 2% off there. We're 7%. We're 6%. So on and so forth. Um, for our VE table, front cylinder. Okay, so these are the suggested corrections that it would like to commit to your tune. And click OK. So again, I'll step through these kind of fast because I've got a handful of run files open. Now, if you say no way in, in, uh, in no way in hell, Dan, these are these are incorrect. You know, that's fine. Clip these out, delete them, you know, put uh, something you do believe in here just because of your experience or whatever it may be. This is completely editable. Um, and you can, you know, edit this in any way, shape or form that you want. Uh, before basically you're committing uh, this to um, your tune. There's also some functions in here to interpolate horizontally, vertically, to do bilinear interpolation, to smooth. So if I say, yeah, pretty good, but let's hit the smoothing button. Okay, just kind of rolls off the edges a little bit, makes these numbers a little more palatable. 2.60, um, you know, they do get they do get smoothed to um, you know their their neighboring values here, and you can also perform math on any one of these values. So it's like a full blown editor. There, it's doing its magic. It's done. So if you know anything about uh, you know uh, C three and the calibration editor, uh, it's got a ton of features. You'll notice these black bold values with a plus sign. This means this was changed. It went up. Pretty simple. Same thing for over here in the tree view. These are all not bold. These are. This is what was changed by that Tune Lab script when it processed these logs from the dyno and applied them to this tune. This tune, there is some smarts that this tune and software level and these logs, they're they're semi-bound. You can still get dissimilar, you know, a bike with the same software level and grab logs from it and open up a tune file from another bike with the same software level and let's say cross-pollinate. So if you're doing a good job keeping, you know, your your tuning sessions in order, you're gonna have a file for a customer, for a VIN, for a particular motorcycle full of all the data logs and its respective tune. So you're not applying the uh, you know corrections gathered from a different session on a different bike to the wrong tune. Okay, again, this is uh, you know Tune Lab. These values have been applied to the uh, VE table, and if I were a Dyno operator today, I would then go and um, go take my uh, vehicle back out of open loop put it back into closed loop and my respected 
uh, my respective, I should say, target AFR table, which is over here in fuel, air fuel ratio. When we get to testing this bike, you know, depending on where you've got the closed loop area set up, these are going to correct based on narrow band feedback. And then ultimately these areas outside of closed loop are going to be respected if you've got your VE tables modeled correctly. Okay, so you can go through this session as many times um, as you'd like. It's very simple. Once you do it once, I think you'll have it, uh, you'll have it whooped. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you while I've got you is that other load uh, built-in correction formula. So you pull it over here. Autotune Pro Advanced. That's something that, you know, people that have been using DinoJet PowerVision would not be familiar with. So DinoJet PowerVision had a few different things under the hood on the device. One was Autotune Basic. It used your narrowband oxygen sensors to <clears throat> get feedback and correct your VE table based on narrowband sensors. Then we had Autotune Pro, and that received feedback from wideband sensors to fix your VE table. And then there was another mode I won't get into, but nonetheless, there was never an Autotune Pro Advanced mode. And what this does is really removes the, the requirement for you to set up this tune and lock it in open loop or put it in a state for temporary tuning purposes. You more or less are going to, again, capture data, whether that's out on the street or on the dyno, collect all this data, get it opened in WinPEP 8 data center. And then <clears throat> this would include, again, that you have uh, you know, an area what likely looks like the table we just looked at, right? Some of this is in closed loop, some of it's in open loop. If you were getting set up to do some pro sessions, you might just lock all this up at, excuse me, at, uh, let me set my num lock here. Um, you know, whatever it may be, 10, 11, 12, 13, uh, whatever it is that you want to lock that out to. But in this case, you know, we are going to allow this vehicle to run in closed loop and open loop, more or less just how it is out on the street. And so when you load this built-in correction formula that's Auto-Tune Pro Advanced, what it's going to do is use narrow band feedback in these areas that are in closed loop with some advanced filtering to avoid Excel enrichment, noise, and decel and Lehman or DFCO. And so in this area, again, it's gonna be using the narrow bands. And then when you jump out of closed loop into open loop, the formula is such that it will use the wide bands for closed loop, excuse me, open loop feedback. That could be likely from your dyno AFR system in order to fix the open loop areas in your VE table. So works pretty well. It avoids uh, setup of the tune, if that makes sense. And so, you know, feel free to, to try it. We feel it works pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this for a moment. Hopefully you've learned a little bit about uh, Donojet PowerCore 3.0 and how to use TuneLab on your Harley Davidson motorcycle with Donojet's PowerVision, PowerVision 3, or PowerVision 4. So, I'll be back another day with another production, hopefully to give you some insight, some help on how to use some of these, what I feel are pretty powerful uh, tools that I look forward to the contingency of Dynojet uh, tuning centers that tune Harley Davidson's with our PowerVision product lineup, uh, just to make that process a heck of a lot easier. So thanks for tuning in.